Hey everyone, Tiffany here. Welcome back to another video or if you're new here, then welcome. It feels like I haven't sat down and filmed a video for you guys in a really, really long time, but I am excited for this one. It's sort of going to be an all-in-one kind of video with some fall and winter favorites, new in pieces, things that I'm currently loving, some trends. You can also use this video as a gift guide idea for the holiday season that's quickly approaching. I also have some beauty products that I'm really excited to share and review for you guys. And as if we have haven't tried on enough Aritzia trousers in my last video. We have three new pairs to try in this one. So there's just a lot going on and yeah, let's dive in. We'll start with a trench coat, which I've actually had for a few months now. I've been looking for a really good trench for a long time and this one is so good by Neely Lotan. She's an Israeli designer based in New York. Some of the things that I look for in a trench is a relaxed fit, not too oversized, but also not too fitted. This one is perfect. You guys know that I'm 5'1 and it hits me just below the calves. I did get the sleeves tailored about an inch shorter, but other than that, it fits perfectly. I also look for details like a storm shield and a back vent for movement. It's in a wrinkle and water resistant material, which is also a must in a good trench coat. It also has these faux leather buckle details, which is a bonus. It doesn't feel heavy. It's actually quite light and airy, but it still has that volume to it, which I love. I think trenches are a must in anyone's wardrobe. They work so well in most seasons. I'm still wearing this as we head into the winter months with some thicker it's layered under which we'll get into later. One thing I do want to mention is if you do decide to pick this up in the black color, it's not a true black. It has a slight sheen to it so it looks more like an off black. Another coat I'm loving and definitely more winter appropriate is this faux shearling double face coat that makes me so excited. I showed this in a shorts, TikTok, and also Instagram a couple weeks ago and you guys loved it. Shearling is such a quintessential winter outerwear piece. This one might be sold out, but I'll try to link other ones if I can find similar pieces. You can also look for a cropped version as well. I think they look so chic. I do want to mention that Mango have been killing it with their collections lately. Some of my favorite pieces in my wardrobe are actually from Mango in the past few years. The quality is great, the fit is pretty good, and the price points are just really affordable. Definitely a store that I think you guys would be happy to shop at and you know find things that, that work for you. Continuing on with some pants and trouser try on from Aritzia. I have the Cisco pant, Sarah pant, and the Cressida pant. All are in the straight leg family. First are the Cisco pants. Finally got these to try and I'll start with what I love. I love the material of this. It's so smooth and soft. They're a little stretchy with a really tight knit, which will hold you in. The material is really close to what I'd want in a pair of thick, dressier, non-athletic leggings. I do like the zip detail. However, the fit wasn't what I was looking for. Even though there was a bit of stretch, they run quite tight. I find the slit opening doesn't lay quite right either when it's unzipped. I wish the zipper went higher up so it opens up a bit more at the leg. Lengthwise, the double zero works for me. I can wear flats and sneakers and they won't drag onto the floor, but if you are similar in height and you're going up in size, then they will end up being a bit longer. These are the Sarah Pan and looked quite similar to the Cisco, so I thought I'd try them on for you. Material-wise, these are different from the Cisco. This looks and feels like the Japanese crepe material, but slightly more durable and thicker. It doesn't have as much stretch as the Cisco and fits really, really tight around the hips and bum area. I do like that they are more of a relaxed straight leg, which I am on the lookout for, but as you can see, they are are quite long and I'd have to wear heels with ease. I also don't even know what to say when they're zipped up. Here they are and we're moving on. I also picked up the Cressida pant and had really high hopes for these, but again, fit way too tight around the hips. My measurements are in the description for your preference. I could have gone up a size, but I know the waist would have been too big and I don't love them enough to get them altered. But if you don't typically have a waist gap issue and you're looking for a pair of straight leg pant that you can wear to work, these might be a good pair to try. It is in their sustainable material, so it feels more durable than the typical crepe fabric. Moving on to shoes. These are by Totem and I picked these up because I was missing a pair of slim boots to style with dress pants and trousers for office looks. They are the opposite of a chunky luxo boot and pairs it well with more of a business casual attire. I love that it has a mini heel so they're quite comfortable to walk in and the elongated square toe is such a beautiful and timeless silhouette. Sizing wise, I did purchase this in A36. I'm typically A35 and a half, but half sizes are not available and the 35 was way too tight on the calves and we're also quite narrow on the foot. So if you are between sizes, then go half a size up. 
I love my sneakers. They're the most comfortable and practical type of footwear for me. So we have two pairs to review and talk about. First ones are the New Balance 550s and I made a little error in sizing when I initially purchased these. These are a size four and a half men's, which is equivalent to a size six women's. I did have these in a five and a half women's, which ended up being too tight all over, but the six fits perfectly, especially with thick socks. I do, however, have to tie them quite tight so my heel doesn't slide out, but other than that, they are so, so comfortable. Actually more comfortable than I ever thought they'd be, especially for a sneaker like this that doesn't have a lot of flexibility in the sole, but it does have quite a bit of cushioning on the inside that makes up for that. I think they're just an easy pair to style with wide leg trousers or baggy denim. I got this pair from Aritzia and they occasionally drop these, so keep an eye out for them because they're still somewhat hard to come by. Aritzia. These were definitely an impulsive purchase. When I saw these in the boutique, I was so excited. These are from the fall winter collection and I did get these a few months ago, but I love, love, love the tweed and suede combination. And of course the neutral colorway, which coincidentally matches my living room. It's so chic and a little more unique with the texture of the tweed. I'm also having a moment with tweed, which I'll be showing you more of in a bit. So maybe that was one of the reasons why I was drawn to this pair. Sizing, I did get these in my usual size 35 and a half length fits perfectly but as you may know chanel shoes usually run narrow so my solution was getting this shoe tree just want to show you guys super quickly because it's such a good and useful tool especially for you girls and guys who might have a wider foot or maybe you just have a pair of shoes that are just a little too tight in specific areas you can use this to make your shoe wider or sometimes even a half size longer in length depending on the material and style of your shoe i've tried using this on sneakers and it works like a gem and super affordable it's just super handy to have. Okay, let's talk tweed. So I tried on a couple of affordable tweed jackets in different silhouettes. This one is from End of the Stories and I love the long line jacket, the round neck, and even the tweed covered buttons. I thought this was so chic and perfect for the office. Size wise, this was an A32 and I think it fits quite well along the shoulders and sleeves. I didn't end up keeping this though because it did have this awkward rippling effect along the hem. So I'm not sure if this was just the one that I received or if they're all just like this. For my Canadians, you don't get your duties back when you make a return or refund. But if you are in the States or Europe and have access to their stores, then definitely check out their jackets and even knitwear. I have a few that I keep on rotation. Another high street find is this one from Mango. Thought this was super cute and again with a round collar, tweed, and cropped. The length of this jacket pairs well with straight or wide leg pants. You can dress it up with trousers or down with denim. It's versatile and chic. Again, so affordable. The style is timeless as well. And for days you want to look a little more polished. I'll probably change up the buttons though. They are quite loud for my taste, but that's easy enough to do. Love this and a staple for any office look. Similar in shape, this is a jacket slash cardigan in a popcorn texture knit, which I love. This is by Bash and my first time shopping with them. Still affordable, but a little pricier from our, our high street finds, but I love how unique this is. One of my favorite features are the shoulder pads, which gives the cardigan structure, which you don't see that often. This elevates the cardigan so you can really dress this up or down. It looks so sophisticated, but you can make it casual with say a pair of denim. It's a piece that will work in all seasons and just so versatile. I can't wait to wear this one on repeat. So the next few items I'm going to show you are essential and basic knits and sweater. Most of these are cashmere and wool blend, if not 100%. And a lot of it is actually from H&M Premium Selection, which I love. The quality is really great. And some of these things were with workwear in mind. I don't specifically buy things just for the office anymore, but things that can integrate into my wardrobe and will want to wear any day of the week. This wrap cardigan is so simple and timeless. You can dress it up or dress it down, layer of black turtleneck under with a pair of trousers, then pop on a pair of pumps and you have a really chic look. You can also swap out the tight belt detail with your own leather belt as well. It's just so easy to wear and also so cozy. This is a cashmere blend and it's been brought back year after year. I've also been experimenting with some vests. I picked this one up because it was a cashmere blend with a mock neck. I love the side detail. I tried wearing it on its own and also layered over a classic white dress shirt for more of an office vibe. I also wanted to experiment with the oversized vest as well. I think this is the most preppy I would go. Not sure how I feel about it, but I definitely throw on a pair of chunky loafers or boots, maybe even a pair of patent pointed heel just to make it a little more edgy, but you can definitely also wear this with a pair of straight leg trousers and ballet flats to keep with that preppy theme. What do we think about the vests? Let me know in the comments. 
I've covered long sleeve t-shirts before and how they're such a staple and this is the knit version in a wool blend material. I specifically love this because of the thumb cutout detail. It makes a basic turtleneck or shirt more chic with a bit of sporty vibe and also practical because it keeps your hands warm and I personally need that. I'm really bad at not wearing gloves when I really should be. I've been seeing the thumb hole detail a lot and I am here for it. The sleeves are quite long so they'll be great for anyone taller but if you're not then you'll get some bunching. I also have it in the crew neck version and this just pairs well with any bottoms like denim, trousers, and skirts. Officially on the denim midi maxi skirt trend and it's been everywhere this season. The washed black or gray denim in my opinion is a little more wearable and understated compared to say blue denim. You can probably wear this into the office for a smart casual look. I love that this has a raw hem and it's just so chic. I don't know how many times I've said that now but wear it with a pair of knee high boots underneath and it's a vibe you guys. I have a few more knits to show you. This one is 100% cashmere and it's one of the softest knits I have. It's from Club Monocle. Haven't shopped there in ages. Picked this up on sale, which is such a great find. It's lightweight, so you can layer this under blazers or jackets comfortably and adds that layer of warmth. It's just a classic piece to throw on and I've already worn this a ton. In terms of silhouette, I love sweaters that have a boxier fit. These are the kind of sweaters that I gravitate towards because to me, they look a little more effortless and can be worn tucked in or just not tucked and it still looks cool versus something that might have a band at the hemline. So I'm here for the boxy look and also I love the wide sleeves. Again, just very chic and effortless. This one is also so cozy in such a thick wool material. I'll definitely link them if they're still available, but if not, I'll find similar pieces. Also, if they are sold out, oftentimes they restock them so you can assign for notifications as well. I'm also getting back into silver jewelry. I think it's fresh, cool, and contemporary. I also think they look really good against gray tones, specifically charcoal or dark gray, and the newest silver colored edition is my aura ring. I've really been enjoying this even just as a fashion piece. I think it's so chunky and cool, matches the aesthetics. But looks aside, its primary function of course is to track sleep, activity, and recovery. Definitely the most chic wearable tech I've seen in the market, and I chose a ring mainly so I could track my sleep and didn't want to wear something bulky on my wrist like an Apple Watch or Fitbit. I won't talk too much about the ring or the data aspect of it in this video, but I'll leave some general information on sizing, membership, and styles in the description if you are interested. I've been wearing it religiously and I'm really liking it so far. It's also gotten me into doing my own research on sleep and how it impacts our health. And I think it would be a really good gift for yourself or someone in your life who is health conscious or into that wellness space. Personally, I'm trying to optimize my sleep and that's a goal of mine leading into next year. Another favorite and a new in is this Rare Beauty blush in the shade Hope. I picked this up about a month ago and also picked up a blush from Gucci as well. I love how creamy and pigmented the liquid blush is. Super easy to apply with your fingers or a brush, but a little does go a long way. This is a really good warm neutral shade. It doesn't lean too cool and also not overly warm either. Gucci's packaging is always so good. I think these would be such a good gift or even stocking stuffers. I have the shade Bright Coral, which looks really similar to the Rare Beauty blush, but you'll see in the swatches that the Rare Beauty has a creamy sheen finish, whereas the Gucci has a bit more of a shimmer to it. If you've watched my past videos before, you'll know that I love Gucci lipsticks. So I picked up a new shade in 206. It's a warmer toned nude with a hint of pink and pairs so well with the warmer blushes. When I do my makeup, I like to match the undertones of my blush to my lip color. I think it just creates a more unified look. I've swatched my favorite Dior blush in a really cool toned pink, for example, and I probably wouldn't pair this with the lipstick. I would instead reach for a warmer toned blush to complement the lips, which I am actually wearing today. So I'm wearing the Gucci blush as well as the Gucci lipstick and I think it's just a really good combo. My go-to concealer lately has been the Dior Backstage Concealer and it's a buildable medium coverage. It feels light, has increased on me, and I love the flat brush applicator. It's my go-to product when I want a bit of coverage and I wear it on its own on days when I don't want to put on a full face of makeup. Highly recommend. This is a new lash and brow serum I've been trying and using for a month now, and I'm definitely seeing results already. My one criticism is the applicator. It is quite stiff, which makes it a little more difficult to precisely apply the serum to the lash line. It takes a bit of getting used to, and I find that I have to try a little harder to not get the product all over my eyelid or lashes. I wish it was more pointed and flexible, but if you're using this on the brow, then that wouldn't really be an issue. That's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.